Okay, so we're live. <laughs> I was going to say getting away with it is not the right words. Okay, so <laughs> welcome to Money Talk Tuesday. Um, love talking about money every single day of the week, but uh, we leave it for Tuesdays most days. Good so, morning. Nancy's coming in a little hot this morning. She's coming I'm coming in hot, in hot this morning. <laughs> coming in hot this morning, and I'll tell you why. Because in, I have two groups, the interior design business form, which we're streaming in and the coaching hotspot, um, mostly in the interior design business form, because that's got over 7,000 people in it. I've seen a lot of posting about like, how much should I charge or how much do other people charge and how do you charge? And whenever I see this question, I think good for them that they're seeking out information. So I never judge that they're asking, but it always worries me the answers that they're getting. Because when I see questions like that, I just want to start asking questions. How long have you been in business? Are you educated or self-taught? Where are you located? Um, what is your service model like? Like, how do you supply your service to the client? And all other questions start flooding in. How confident are you in your, like, when you're delivering your prices? How is your delivery? How is your presentation? How is your body language? Because I can't tell someone charge $150 an hour when I don't know these things. I don't just base it and I don't want anyone else basing it on just one thing. And it worries me when I see so many people weighing in. I'm afraid that person's going to go off and try to deliver some random pricing that doesn't relate back to them. And then they may not be successful. Yeah, there's so many, it depends. Like there, if you're looking for the golden answer of here it is on a silver platter, here's a special algorithm that's going to tell you exactly how much to charge. That's not the answer you're going to get today. No, because it really varies, right? So again, I coach online business coaches and consultants like web designers, social media marketers and et cetera. But I also coach still a, my lion's share of my business is still interior designers. So when an interior designer gets on for a consult with me, I ask a lot of questions in the beginning, and then I listen and I watch them through Zoom, and I determine whether I think they're charging the right amount of money and the way they're charging, whether it's going to work for their location, their experience, for their delivery, for their client process. Are they at the point where they could be charging more? Or are they still at the point where maybe they're charging too much, right? Like I have this one example, and if she watches, she'll know it's her. I had a, uh, an interior designer who said to me, I'm a $250 an hour designer. I'm like, oh, wow, awesome. And she was definitely in a location that could handle that amount hourly. However, when I started digging in, because why did she hire me, right? Because she wasn't profitable enough. When I started digging in, she was giving up a lot of her $250 an hour because she really wasn't confident enough to deliver the true price. So we found that her bigger clients, her bigger opportunities were less profitable. Why? Because when she saw the big number, she was afraid to deliver it. Right? So is she really a $250 an, an hour designer? Or is she really an $85 an hour designer, which is what it was coming out to on average because she was giving up because she was afraid to deliver the higher price because she wasn't feeling comfortable in her sales process or in her presentation. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's so many like factors when trying to figure out pricing. So people come to you all the time to figure out their numbers. Right. Right. What right. do you tell them about how they should price themselves? Well, here. Oh, here okay. okay. So many things, so many things about pricing. One, like, is anybody willing to pay you what you're getting now? Are you having to turn away business or are you getting a whole lot of no's? That can kind of give you a feel for what the marketplace has in perception of your services at that point. Like if you're, if you're like I, too many, too many, sorry, waiting list, waiting list. 
there's room to jack up your prices. Right. If you but keep putting your closing people, rate, your closing rate, if you're closing hundred percent right. of the people, everybody's hiring you, then maybe it's time to raise your prices up a little bit. Right. Right. Now, if you're just getting started and you're like, I hear interior designers make $250 an hour and you're going out there and you're asking for $250 an hour. If people are giving that to you, great, go for it. Uh, but <laughs> sorry, I kind of, I got a hair it's itching my nose. Um, <laughs> But at the same time, if if you're going out there and you're new and you don't have a feel for what the marketplace is and you can't get anybody to say yes to you, we need to examine if it's your pricing or if it's the presentation that you're putting in front, the offer that you're putting in front of people in the first place. Um, it depends. That's the answer on this one. I mean, it's so specific to your scenario. The worst thing is like, okay, I liken this to going out and just... The, the worst thing that you can do when you're looking for a VA is just go out there and say, hey, I need a VA. You will get 100 people being like, I'll do it, I'll do it. And they don't even know what the work is, it's right? Like, they don't even know, like, if it's going to be social media or if it's going to be, you know, some creative type stuff because that's not the VA that you want is the one that's raising their hand volunteering without knowing what the work is. Right. Right? right. So same thing with pricing. When you're going out there and taking any work that you can get, um, so many factors into this. Are you specializing in kitchens? Are you specializing in offices? Um, um, I, I have somebody who I will pay $400 to pick a wall color every time. Because I know that $400, I'm going to get an answer that's going to save me five weeks and probably 14 color samples. And I trust her implicitly. Right. And here's the thing. You have to, she has the confidence to deliver, hey, Megan, it's going to cost you $400 for me to pick a paint color. And you're like, yes. Why is that? Because she has been able to relay her value to you, maybe has proven it before now, uh -huh. and maybe even at a lower price. And now her prices have gone up, right? Because She's of built experience. massive trust with me. Exactly. So there's so many factors. It, and when I'm telling you, when I see the post, how much should I charge? I'm like, oh God, here it comes. Everyone's like, well, I charge a flat fee and I charge this. And I love the, I love this answer, which I've heard from some coaches. And I get it as a check of your logic, but I don't think this is 100% the way you figure out your pricing. Well, figure out how much you want to make for a living in 2021, then figure out how many clients you can handle or want to handle. Divide it by, and that's how much you charge. Like, that's just it. And I'm like, no, there's so much more that goes into that. Be, that would be like if I looked at how much another coach charges and just went, oh, well, that's they seem to be busy. That's what the market can bear. So I'm just going to choose their prices and not make it about the success I've had with my clients, right? Or the success my clients have had with working for me, working with me. Right. So and, and about my experience and about my process. And you said it before we went live, your add on value. Like, what are you adding on to your programs, to your services that take you up to that next level, that make them feel like you're worth that money? Right. Yeah. There are little nuances where you can become more of a luxurious service, take on less clients with a more personalized touch points. And that's going to be like, you know what? I may pay a little bit more for him or her, but it's worth it because they hold my hand all along the way. Yes. Anybody who doesn't have like a set in stone, you are going to charge flat. And this is how it's going to work for your business. Anytime I come across a coach that says like, it's going to be my way or the highway, I'm like, mm -hmm, right, right. Like it depends. This is my favorite phrase. It depends right? It depends on your strengths. It depends on your market. It's all calculus. There's all these different variables in there. All, all, the, all this calculus going on. Um, uh, I just had a thought and it just went, oh, <laughs> that's been happening to me all morning. <laughs> I know. Okay. I mean, I came so, on all ramped up about this, right? right? How do you figure out how much to charge? If you're it starting is out, Flat fee is probably not for you because you don't know how long this thing is going to take. You don't have an average to go back and look at and say, okay, I always quote those for 10 hours, but they end up being 20. I quote those for 50 hours. They always end up being 40. You know, you, know, you, don't, you don't know enough yet to charge flat free. Absolutely. And that goes for a coach. That goes for an interior designer. That coach goes for a consultant. If you don't know your process and how long certain things take you, at least in a range 
please don't convert to flat fee. I've had designers who come to me with flat fee and I love flat fee if it's working for you. So we analyze if it's working for you. And if it's working for you, I don't change the, you know, if something's working, I'm not gonna change it. However, when I realize where did that flat fee come from? I don't know. Or I took a coaching course and somebody told me that's what I should be charging. And I'm like, okay, but have you tracked your hours? And I know everyone hates tracking their hours, but I don't care what you do for a living. If you're a service-based entrepreneur, there has to be some cognizance about how many hours things take you. Yes. Right? Right? If you're going to, like, in my coaching world, like, how long am I going to be on the phone with them? But then, how many hours do I put into the membership site that supports them? How many hours do does my team put into creating the hub where all their um, videos are going to sit so they can go back and watch on replay and get them transcribed and have it, right? It's like all these things go into the entire experience that somebody has with me coaching with me. And that goes into my pricing. Also the results that I know they'll have based on statistics. So if you guys are just taking advice from other people in the group, it's good to get advice from other people, but take it with a grain of salt, meaning this is information gathering, but it's not necessarily the be all and end all of what you should do in your business. There's so many other factors. It's not linear. It's not linear. It's what val I wrote down a bunch of things that we were talking about before we went live. It's how much value do you add in your service model? Supply and demand, your experience, your location, the client experience, what you are creating for them. What service model are you actually selling? And then what is your confidence in your sales and your words and in your body language and your presentation? I can tell you all day long how much to charge, but if I don't teach you how to make the presentation in a way that is going to be appealing to somebody and get their trust, it's going to mean it's going to be meaningless. So just be careful when you're trying to set your prices for different service models. I'm talking to anyone who's watching now or on replay to make sure you're considering all these factors and don't just consider it like, oh, someone down the street charges 175. I'm going to charge yeah. 175. And truly like sit down away from screens with a pad of paper and take into account everything Nancy just told you. All of those things that I want you to walk through it in your mind and on paper from both your perspective and then turn it around and from the client perspective of what do they actually see, actually see, right? This is the offense side of your business, the part of your business that they see. They might not see your little feet paddling under the water over on the defense side, but what is this that they see? Because what they see is where the value is. What they perceive the value to be. Yes, right? yes, yes. And that is the most important part. Does the client see the value and how can you communicate your value in the beginning in order to get the price that you need to run a profitable business. And you said something really interesting out of if you calculate whether you're flat fee or whether you're hourly um, margin on furnishings for the interior designers or margin on courses for coaches and consultants out of what you're going to make, like out of that hourly fee, let's say that you think you're worth, how much actually is going into profit? You said it differently when before. How much is going in your pocket? How much are you able to put in your pocket? And this isn't just a passive thing that, oh, look, I, I, I did my 50 projects this year, like just like I planned. And now to the here's my $100,000. It doesn't work that way. You got to plan for it and then be disciplined about it, right? It can't be, oh my gosh, we're... we're I'm just gonna keep on going this morning, I guess. <laughs> I know we could go on forever on this topic. Well, and there's I have an I have an email coming out, which I didn't even get to talk to you about privately, but one of my clients who you worked with also, because part of my one-on-one -on -one coaching is you get a session with Megan at some point, whenever I think you're ready, um, for with my virtual CFO, which is very helpful for all my clients. And she just went from the same top line number basically $100,000 more in her, her um, gross income minus her cost of goods. That number went up, but the bottom line was she went from 20 something thousand a year net profit in 2019 to over 101,000. Yet, right, this is it working with me and working with you because it comes along with my coaching program that you work with me and you get Megan too and you get 
my social media marketer and you get my web designer. At some point, we help bring in the team to help you analyze what you're doing and where you need to change. But I'm going to be putting that out in an email because it was so remarkable that she went from 20 something thousand net profit to over a hundred thousand in the year she worked with me with the same top line number. So how did that happen? Right. We worked on her process. We worked on her pricing. We worked on finding opportunities for income that she wasn't even seeing. So it's not just how much should I charge? It's just not just about that. It's about so many factors. Yes. Drives me crazy. So if you have the temptation to go onto Facebook and into the interior design group and say, how much should I charge for this new job I'm about to get? Pause. Maybe there's a better question you should be asking. There's so many questions you should be asking, <laughs> right? Well, here's the thing. Go and ask, help each other. That's the goal, right? That's what these groups are for. That's why I created them. Um, but then take the information and understand there's a lot of follow-up clarification and questions that you need to ask before you determine that, boom, this is going to be my pricing. It's not just about one thing. So if you're just coming on now, go back and listen, because I... This is probably the number one question I get with one-off consults is I'm not sure about my pricing. And that is one thing that 100% in every initial consultation I do, we go over pricing and I give the determination whether I think their pricing is adequate and right on target for where they are in their business journey, where they are with their uh, years of experience, where they are with their ideal client, whether they're getting it, whether they're not getting it, and whether they are selling and marketing themselves with confidence to be able to get the number they're shooting for, or whether there are things they have to learn in order to get there. So it's multifaceted. It's not one, there's not one answer, right? True. For, for coaches, for consultants, for interior designers, there is not one answer. How to figure out what to charge for your clients or your services, ask yourself the series of questions that Megan and I went over today and then think it through. And if you need help, get on a consult with me. That is one of the things that I can do really quick is give you, based on thousands of interior designers I've worked with and known in my lifetime in the interior design field and now in the coaching field, whether your prices are on target for your individual situation. So. Dig it. Okay. All right, everyone. So go have a great Tuesday. I hope this was helpful today. And I'm sure I'll see a ton more posts. How much should I charge? But uh, if you have any questions below about your money, put them below. So Megan and I have topics for the future. Um, and we're making sure we address what your needs are. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Megan. You're welcome. This was my pleasure. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Go have a great week. Bye, everyone. Bye.